Hello, David Clark here from DVC Training, and in this video, I'm just going to talk about some of the grading features of EDIUS. Recently, I was discussing with somebody whether he should move over to Resolve, because obviously there's lots of good grading inside of Resolve, and now they've got editing. Well, there are reasons to move, and there's reasons not to move. Obviously, Resolve is built as a grading program, so the grading part of it is actually very good. But I do find I can do a ton of stuff inside of EDIUS without having to go to any other program. I like the editing side of EDIUS better, so I prefer to stick with EDIUS if I can. And I thought, well, why not do a short video with some tips on how to get good grading inside of EDIUS. EDIUS has quite a few colour correction effects built in. The ones I use the most are the three-way colour corrector, the YUV curve, and the primary colour corrector. And if you have a shot like this, which the whole thing's just come out too blue, then I would probably take the primary colour corrector, put it onto the shot, open it up and then just change the temperature here to try and get rid of the blue so it comes out to be more natural colors and I'd probably throw in a three-way color corrector and maybe just click in the gray bits and click in the black bits and click in the white bits try and balance it up a bit better maybe boost the saturation in the mid-tones or take it down if it's a bit high then maybe throw on another effect I'd use a YV curve to brighten up the mid-tones can do the same kind of thing in the primary color corrector but I'd use a combination of those three effects to do a lot of grading and colour correction on my clips. If you've been using EDIUS for a bit, you'll be familiar with all of those. They've done quite a few tutorials on those on the website. I'm not going to go through those. I'm just going to go through some of the other grading parts of EDIUS that you might not use so much. First thing I want to look at is called the chrominance filter. So using these filters that I've just been using, they're affecting the entire clip. Sometimes you want to trim down what you're affecting to a specific area or a specific range of colours or a specific range of brightnesses. In the three-way colour corrector, we do have this bit in the middle, which is all about doing secondary colour correction. So this is where I would be able to affect colours in just one part of the image. So if I throw another three-way colour corrector on there and open it up, and what I want to do is I want to sample out this orange because I want to try and downgrade that a bit. Now to do that, you would come in here and choose color range and then click on the color that you're trying to affect and it was set a range of colors up here. Obviously I've chosen an orange, so it selected the oranges. Now nothing's happening at the moment because first of all, I haven't changed anything up here. And secondly, I haven't turned any of these things on. So I just click on that and now it's choosing to only adjust those colors. So obviously I can make it a bit blue. You see it's made some of them a bit blue. I can drag these things out to encompass more oranges. So the bit in the middle is the bit that's being affected and this is just kind of fuzzing up the edges. And you can refine it further by just affecting certain areas of saturation or certain areas of luminance. If I turn on the saturation and the dark areas in this graph are the highly saturated bits and the light areas are the not so saturated bits. And in the luminance, I can choose just to affect the dark areas or just to affect the light areas or just to affect the midtones. Now I'm zooming over that quite quickly because to be honest, most of the time I don't use this for this kind of color correction because I find I get slightly naff edges on things and there's no way of fuzzing the edge up. You now looking at the join there, you can see there is an awful sort of steppy pattern as it goes from the bit that's affected to not affected. And I can maybe drag these handles out and fuzz that up a little bit, but I don't have a huge amount of control over it. So although I can use this to limit my grading to certain areas, I don't use it most of the time. Instead, I use the chrominance filter. Now, the chrominance filter is not in the color correction effects. It's down amongst your regular filters, and it's just there. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same using the chrominance filter, but I'm gonna get a better result and I can fuzz up the edges. Now I'm gonna show off the basics just using this shot of a butterfly. I want to take the orange bits on this butterfly and change them to a different color. I'm going to take the chrominance filter, drop it on there, double click to open it up. And what you have here, first of all, is something that lets you choose the color you're going to affect. There's some boxes for refining that color a bit, and then things to say what's going to happen inside the area you've defined and outside. I want to go for these orange things. So using the first option here, I just click on the orange and it chooses the orange color. If I go look at key color, you can see the color it's actually choosing. There we are, orange-ish. Now nothing's happening at the moment because I haven't told it to put an effect on there, but I've now chosen that orange color. I'm gonna say inside the orange color that I've chosen, do something. 
Now in my case, I'm going to choose a very simple filter, which is the color wheel. And I am going to just adjust the hue completely of the red bits. So now you can see I've done something. You can see I've actually got some bits here that have been affected. Hasn't done everything. So I've also clicked on an orange and it's just chosen a specific orange. So probably I need to expand the range of colors. So you could come into these sliders and change the actual color that you're going for. You can spread it out so you're using a bigger range of colors and a bigger range of luminance. Now you can see that's achieved what I want. Actually, most of the time I don't tend to set it up using the color picker. I use one of these other settings. I actually use this oval one because I find it easier and get better results with it. These are just different ways of choosing the color. And just by going to one of these other settings, it completely forgets the ones that I set up here. If I go back to the color picker, they're still there. But if I go to here, I've got to set it up from scratch. What this does is it shows you all the colors of the rainbow and you move this sphere around until you choose the colors that you want to affect. So I'm trying to go for the oranges, so it must be somewhere around here. But it's showing me all the colors of the rainbow and I don't have all the colors of the rainbow in this shot. I just have the ones here. And there's this nice little tick box called histogram, which trims it down to just the colors that are in the picture. So obviously the things over here, but well, there's no colors like that in that picture, so I don't need it at all. So I just had to make sure I keep over these oranges and I know I'm roughly in the right area. And then I can tug these handles and move it around until I get the kind of colors that I want to color selected. Now I've obviously already got my color wheel on there so I can tell what's going blue, but this is a show keys gonna come in handy because it shows me exactly what bits of the image I'm choosing. And I just find that's a really simple way of setting this up. Now this is fairly similar to what I was doing in the three-way color corrector. What I really like about this though, is this shape alpha up here, because what that does is it blurs the edges. So that you can see as I'm doing that, I'm getting a much blurrier matte. And the fact that you can blur the edges means that you can really change a lot of things and get away with a lot of changes that you can't do in the three-way color corrector, which has got that very harsh edge which jumps out at you. As I'm blurring this, I'm affecting less and less of the blues until it's not having any effect at all. In this case, I probably want fairly sharp edges because they're really well defined. So that's what the chrominance filter can do. How would I use it when I'm grading something? Well, for a start, I've often been asked, how do I have everything in black and white except for one particular thing on the green, like a girl in a red dress or something? Well, this is a very good example. You can see I've got a huge amount of green in here and I've got a butterfly. If I want all the green to be black and white, I just move this thing over the green. I stick in a filter that gets rid of all the color and lo and behold, I've got black and white background and color for the rest of it. But how would I use it when I'm grading, say, this shot? In particular, I just want to tone down all these oranges over here because they're a bit much. Well, I'm going to pop the permanence filter on there, open it up, go to my histogram and drag a box out over the orange colors. And let me see, that's kind of covered just about all of the ones I want. Fuzz up the edges a bit so I don't have such a sharp edge and then stick a filter on that that lets me maybe desaturate these a bit so they're not sticking out so much. You can see there, very easily affected all just that range of colors without having harsh edges anywhere, managed to include this kind of stuff as well. Now having desaturated that, maybe I can stick another filter on to up the saturation on everything. Now it's brought the color back in there, but it's also brought some color back into her face. Here's another shot that I was fiddling with recently. This actually happens to be standard definition and upscaled. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, okay, it's fine, but I really wish there was a bit more color in my face. Well, again, this is where I would definitely go straight to the chrominance filter, open it up, and I'm heading for the oranges that are in my face. So let's turn on show key, move this around, maybe make it a little bit bigger till I've got something which has got my hair, my face in, and whatever's going on over here. So I've now chosen that area, and inside that I am going to put in a three-way color corrector. Could use anything that will boost the color, so like I could use the uh, old-fashioned color balance and whack up the chrominance, which isn't bad. It's managed to put color in everything here. Quite a blunt instrument, but I could use that. I could use the primary color corrector, which is more or less going to do the same thing. It's going to up the saturation in me until I'm completely orange. 
obviously I'd go somewhere in the middle but actually a lot of time for skin tones I will do things with the three-way color corrector what I like about the three-way color corrector is you have saturation for the dark areas the mid-tones and the highlights and all these skin tones happen to be in the middle generally so I'm gonna whack that up if you go back and have a look at the others in this case maybe you can't see any difference but most of the time I use that for increasing skin tones because doing the mid-tones means it doesn't mess up other parts of the thing that you've selected and it's only affecting my face I can fuzz it up if I'm getting really naff edges on it. Now, again, that's just take this show alpha and fuzz and fuzz and fuzz. You can see it gets fuzzier and fuzzier. The fuzzier these edges are, the less you're going to notice the join. But of course, now I'm actually increasing the saturation more in the green areas around my face. So, yeah, sort of, it's a trade off from not too sharp a horrible edge and starting to do stuff you don't want to do. Another thing I like this for is for sort of desaturating certain brightness areas of the image. So I'm going to throw another chrominance filter on there, open it up, go to this thing again. I'm not going to go for getting rid of a particular color here. I'm actually going to go for a certain range of brightnesses. So the way to do that is you take this color wheel and you just make it do everything. So I've now made it so big that it's actually going to do every color in the image. And then I use this part of the interface to trim down what I'm doing to certain brightness ranges. So this is color, this is brightness. Now I wasn't fiddling with this earlier, I did literally chose all the oranges. But I could have chosen just to do the dark oranges or mid-tone oranges or the light oranges. So, so far if I click show key I'm doing everything. Now if I start dragging the handle that's at the top of this downwards, you'll notice now I'm, the black bits are bits of the image I'm not fiddling with. And keep going down and down and down and down and down and now I'm just fiddling with the the dark areas of the image so it's the bits in the trees there and it's my coat I find this particularly on this particular shot I actually find it's quite nice to get rid of the saturation in the shadows especially when I'm trying to match it with other shots so chopped it down to about there now I'm going to again put in a color filter of some description let's go for color balance and I'm just going to drag that downwards and now I'm taking the color out of those gray areas. Now it's quite subtle you might not even notice it when you're looking at the the overlay here. You know, if I fiddle with the brightness you can see the bits I'm fiddling with but take that down that's more or less taken all the color out of those black areas so those black areas are now black as opposed to what they were a minute ago. Now let's play it. Well I'm quite lucky because I'm not really getting much obvious edges here what always happens I find when you're doing this kind of thing is you get really really obvious edges between the bits you're doing especially when you're changing brightness horrible edges between the bits that you're trying to affect and the bits you're not trying to affect which is where the wonderful alpha shape comes in because you can blur those edges so it's not so noticeable also you only really notice the edges when the thing's moving it looks fine on a still image but as soon as the thing starts moving those edges jump around like nobody's business so you start the thing playing I've marked out this clip just by selecting the clip and pressing Z I press the loop play button then I open the thing up and I fiddle with it but just by doing that and using this you can now trim it down to just dark areas or just light areas if you just wanted to get some color out of the highlights you can just choose the bit at the top and I find that does a much better job than using the three-way color corrector of course you can use whatever filter you like so there I'm using the color balance filter but I could have put in a primary color corrector in there and use that to desaturate it and then I could do things like make the darker areas a bit darker as well so it's only affecting those really dark areas that I've chosen that's what I like about it you can choose an area and then use whatever filter you feel like on it you can even stack up lots of filters so I can have up to five filters affecting whatever that color range is I wouldn't do it in this case because I'm just desaturating the highlights but let's go back to my face colors so that's this chrominance filter here open it up this was the one that just affects the red bits and what I did was I put in a bit more saturation well given that this is a bit of standard definition that's been up res to high def I could do with putting a sharpness filter on there to maybe try and improve the look of it so I'd like to shove a couple of filters on there. I'd like a three-way color corrector providing color and I'd like a sharpness filter as well. The way to do that is you go to the inside filter and you choose this thing combine filters. I'm going to go into the setup and say right I want a three-way color corrector at the top 
And that three guy color corrector, I'm gonna up the saturation. I then wanna have a sharpness filter. Now where is the sharpness filter? Okay, it's unfortunately not in alphabetical order. I've got some extra plugins called Ignite, so you can see I've got a huge amount of stuff in here. And I've just gotta find the sharpness in that list. There we are. Let's go to the setup of that and then just whack the sharpness up a bit. Now you notice as I'm doing that, my face is getting sharper. So it's looking like it was more detailed in the first place. Play the thing and maybe it's too sharp, maybe it's causing a bit of juddering around the edges, but it's definitely made it look a bit better than it did in the first place. That's without and that's with. And then if I wanted to do something like brighten that thing up again, I could shove in another filter. Let's maybe put in a YUV curve there and I'm gonna up the brightness on the skid tones. And you see I can combine up to five filters here and they're all constrained by the chrome minutes filter to just the reds, they're not affecting anything else. Now those changes are quite subtle. If I want to see what it's like with and without them, I can just select both filters down here and click on the tick because both are selected to turn both off. So that's before and that's after. But just through nice use of the chrominance filter there, I've managed to selectively grade different parts of the image and do different things like sharpening it up, all with the one filter. Really love the chrominance filter. It's nice and it's subtle. There's a lot you can do with it. It does have this little blue tick here which means that it's not supposed to work in 10-bit projects. When you're doing grading, it's better, if you can, to work in a 10-bit project rather than an 8-bit project. It's set here in the project settings, and you've got two choices. 8-bit, which is kind of what we film in most of the time, and 10-bit. And what it means is it's actually dealing with a bigger color range. In 10-bit, it's using more colors than it does with 8-bit. And when you make your final movie at the end, you probably will make it up in 8-bit anyway, but because you work in 10-bit, you get better results because it's got more colors to play with. So I've got it set for 10-bit, but Edius is saying, yeah, this chrominance filter isn't 10-bit because that's what that little blue tick means. Yeah, maybe it isn't. I actually get good results with it, which is why I use it. I get better results with that than I do trying to do selective color correction with, say, the three-way color corrector. Fine, I'm happy with it. If it looks good, that's my most important thing.